this tutorial I'm going to try and show you how to do an effect like this. We're going to wrap some video around a cube in motion. It's going to be a little complex, so let's just get started. Unlike the last video cube uh, that we did, we used a title. You can't use a title with this effect. For some reason, as of Motion 5.0.6, this technique just does not work with titles, so we'll have to use a Final Cut effect. And we're just going to start off and create a couple of new groups, just because. The basic idea here is to chop this drop zone up into 12 different sections. And this needs to be a 1080 project, and this will only work with HD aspect video. So the first thing I need to do is draw a rectangle. I'm going to start in the middle, hold down the Option key and the Shift key, and drag out. It doesn't matter what size, just drag something out. Go into the Inspector, into Geometry, and this needs to be minus 180. 180. 180, 180, minus 180, minus 180, and minus 180. Okay, that makes this rectangle dimensions 360 pixels by 360 pixels. 360 times 3 is 1080. So now we're going to duplicate these and spread them out. I like to start this with Let's center this first, hit the position tool, and I'm just going to drag this out to about 180. And with snapping on, it should snap at the zero point, and we'll see here 180. Hold down the Option key, click and drag. Let's just keep doing this. One on this side, another one on this side, and we're going to duplicate this group and drag these up. Uh, it will go to 360. Make a note of all these numbers because they will be repeated over and over again. 180s, 360s, and 540s. Duplicate this group again, and we'll just move this down to minus 360. Okay. Okay, we have our bottom rectangles, our top rectangles, and our faces. To briefly explain what we're going to try and do with this, we're going to arrange the pieces in columns. Each column will have a top, a face, and a bottom. And we are going to specify an anchor point so that we can create folds. We're going to group the folding sections, except for the top, face, and bottom, into separate sections so that uh, we can fold columns. Okay. And so we'll start with the first one. Uh, let's just hide all of these for right now. And uh, I'm going to call this group Tops. And this one Bottoms. And Faces. Okay, let's start with the back side. That's going to be this first column over here. Go to the effect source, clone by typing the K key, select the effect source again, type K for clone, and we're going to just make three to begin with. We will move these three clones into their own group here. And we're going to turn off the effect source. Okay, we'll find our back. I'm going to move the back face into this group. The back top into this group. 
and the back bottom into this group. Okay, and we have this is the face. I'm going to arrange the faces to be the middle section and I'm just going to drag the shape on the clone layer to create a mask. This is going to be the top, so I'll drag this on here and there. And so now we have our first fold. I'm going to uh, actually suggest that you label all of these because this gets really complex really fast and you need to be able to keep track of all of these sections and I'm going to select each all of these and command shift G to group them might have to collapse it first command shift okay and this is the back side all right now for each one of these sections for the top and bottom we need to align the anchor points so we select the anchor point tool and I'll just turn these off for a second and for the top we're going to align the anchor point to the bottom and I'm just roughing this in right now and for the bottom we need to align the anchor point to the top go into the properties and like I said remember the numbers 540 is always going to be 1 and 180 these are absolute values so if it's minus add the minus sign and make sure you duplicate the same values for the anchor points so Now the X value for the anchor point is not that critical for these. What's going to happen is uh, we're going to design this so that the sections of the side will be animatable on this hinge. And for the top it be, okay let's straighten this out. Okay, we can turn this back on. And now for the group, we're going to set the anchor point to the right edge here. And its closest value is going to be 360, so we'll do minus 360. We'll do 0, minus 360, and 0. And so now we will have this hinge to fold. The next section we're going to do is the left side. This will be the front side and this will be the right side. I'm going to duplicate the steps I did for this group, for this group, and I will be back as soon as it's done. Okay, so I've duplicated the steps for the left fold and you can see with the group selected, I can rotate there's a little bit of problem here. The back side should always be attached to this edge of the left side. So to do that, let me reset this. We're going to take the left fold and the back fold, select them both together, and group them together. And we're going to call this group left and back fold. And the anchor point is set up at the zero point. And now, with this selected and rotating, we see the back and the left are connected together. And if we go to the back fold and change its Y rotation, it is still connected to the edge of the left fold. And now they can be manipulated together. 
and this will look better when we add a camera to this. So let me reset this and reset this. We will go ahead and set up these next two folds the exact same way as these two and then work on creating the rest of this effect. So I'll, I'll be right back as soon as I've finished these other two. Okay, so now I've finished all of these cutouts and I'm ended up with a left and back fold folder group with the left fold and back fold inside and then a front fold group and a right fold group. The right fold rotation will be a necessary item. Okay. So the best thing to do here is for each fold is to create a rig so that you can limit the rotation from 0 to 90 degrees relative to the face and in the direction it would need to be one side is going to be 90 the other side is going to be minus 90 but to the user we're just going to set up a 0 to 90 degree rotation it'll always be in the same direction for that particular fold so let's start back down with the back fold go to the top and we'll be rigging the X rotation add to rig create new rig add to new slider let's name this rig folds and this slider is going to be the back top fold and we're going to slide this control over to the 100, 100 mark so that this snapshot control highlights and then we're going to dial this down to minus 90. Okay, if motion starts adding anything past the decimal, you're going to have to type it in because it just gets out of alignment sometimes. And for the range maximum, you can go ahead and elect to just type in 90. And so now our control goes from 0 to 90. And when this is in Final Cut, you can't over control this. And we'll do the same thing for the back bottom. X, add to rig, folds, add to new slider. This one will be in the opposite direction. And change this to 90. Okay, and for each one of these, we will be going through and doing this. I'll do one more. We'll do the back fold Y rotation. Okay, and so now we have this, this, and this. And the next group we'll do is the left, front, and then the right. Now I'll leave that up to you to fill in. Uh, the last thing we're going to do is let's add a camera. And you'll see that the entire arrangement rotates in space
Okay, and you will want to publish all of the parameters that you want to have accessible in Final Cut. Like this. Not necessarily in this order. Uh, you'll notice that I've got some red numbers here and these keyframes are highlighted. I had accidentally switched on the uh, auto record. So um, if you end up with those, just delete them. And let's go to the group. Let's publish the position. Rotation. When you add the camera, you might want to publish some of these. You might want to publish the opacities of the folds so you can control which fold on the top is the most visible. Otherwise, you'll end up with the topmost fold, which would, in this grouping, would be the right fold. You can change that if you want to automate it by changing the order of the groups. And so you end up with these kinds of controls in Final Cut. Now I have some extra features in this one. I've got the ends as extra. That can be animated with the flank controls, the left flank and right flank. I have the opacity set up here and the camera controls and position and rotation. So basically this is the basic project I've just gone through with the exception of the extra ends and you should be able to figure out how to handle those just dealing with the faces of the cube. You can download this effect in the, from a link in the description below. You can take a look at it or just go ahead and install it if you don't want to do the project. I hope you find this useful and I'll catch you on the next one.